Well, even though I'm Brazilian, and, he, and I decided to talk about, to address Bolivia for some specific reasons, because it's a not so well-known country in the South America continent, and it's a country which has, let's say, a controversial image, and then uh, this research intends to analyze uh, the Bolivia throughout the uh, Simon Anhold hexagon, not necessarily to analyze a specific uh, nation brand campaign, but the country as well. So we're gonna introduce you through the nation brand index to talk about a little bit uh, the Republic of Bolivia regarding tourism, heritage, people who export, import foreign investments and foreign policy and governance, domestic policy, people and migration. The step throughout the Simon O. Anhold analysis will be first to present Bolivia, check the potentials of the country, and last, provide advice and suggestions to improve Bolivia, Bolivia nation's branding. For those who doesn't know, Simon Anhold is a British public advisor who developed the concept of nation branding this hexagon was launched in 2002. However, the first nation brand index was launched in 2005. And throughout these six main points, a country can be analyzed. Is it, uh, uh, it is a public survey. So we, we in each point here, we have sub points, but today we're gonna pick up the main points in order to save time and to give you a better overview. Well, Bolivia, it's a landlocked country located in South America, has its uh, neighbor countries uh, such as Argentina and Brazil and Peru, Chile and Uruguay. It's uh, actually a country who is ranked as the eighth country out of 156 countries me measured in the nation brand analysis. And some basic fa facts about the country. Uh, Bolivia was initially part of the Inca Empire, and then the Spanish con conquistadors took over the country, took the control of the country in the seventh century. They had 16 years of war independence, and it has a current population of 10 million people. It's a very small population, right? Now we're gonna see a short video uh, showing some of the Bolivians' uh, natural beauty. And here you can check the Bolivia Nation Brandy campaign slogan called Bolivia Te Espera who was first uh, developed in 2011 and redeveloped last year, updating some data and releasing new videos and new informations about the country.
In English, Bolivia, te espera means Bolivia waits for you, right? So, as the intention here is not only to say visit Bolivia, Bolivia has a natural beauty, has a good people, and etc. The main intention is to analyze the country under its reality in order to provide some advice. We're going to start talking about tourism, tangible and natural heritage. Bolivia currently attracts uh, 800,000 tourists a year. And just to you have an idea, it's a very few number compared mainly with its neighbors countries, such as Ecuador, 1.3 million, and Peru, 3.2 million. And uh, the tourism sector uh, comprises around 6.3% of Bolivia, uh, Bolivia GDP, comprised last year, right? But if we analyze it, that this number is increasing very gradually. It's a country which has six UNESCO heritage sites and one natural site. Here we can see uh, the ancient capital of the pre-Ican empire before the Spanish took control of the country. And the other side, we can see the city of the Potosi. Just to a matter of information, Potosi was on one of the richest cities in the world in the past uh, through the, the silk exploitation, right? And the city of La Paz, it's the capital city. It was considered one of the seventh most beautiful capitals in, 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 the, in the world. And here we come to a very strong point, but it's not so well, that is not so well developed yet in Bolivia. There is the ecotourism uh, in the country. Bolivia has uh, a, a very diverse geography. Right, it's one of the most high countries. It has a, a, a very impressive altitude, has jungles, has savannas, and uh, very different climates going from the hot weather to the, the, the cold weather up to in the mountains. And it has around four million hectares of relatively intact ecosystem. In Bolivia, there is a nation, national law regarding the Pachamama. It's the only country in the world which has a law treating specifically of the use of the land. So the land there in Bolivia cannot be exploited uh, without the approval of the National Congress and also from the, the president. That is very important to the preservation of the ecosystem, right? And even though it's a small country, it has the 80th largest biodiversity in the world, uh, and it has 22 national parks. Here it's the very famous Lake Titicaca. It's the highest lake in the world. Some people ask because why it's, it's the highest one. Because it's very on the top of the mountains in the altitude. And it's the largest lake in the South America as well. We have the Andes Mountains, that is a chain of mountains come down until this very south of the South America continent through Argentina and also Chile. And here are the Cholas, Cholitas, right? Because if you say Cholas, it seems that they don't like very well. So the right name to, to great them, it's Cholitas. Uh, here, it's a very important point about Bolivia because not only the natural beauty is the source of attraction to, for tourists, but also the people. Many people visit Bolivia to get to know, to get to know better how the Cholitas live and they are considered to, tourist attractions as well because they own a lot of knowledge about herbs, about the, the natural preservation a cultural and cultural heritage as well. Bolivia is a multi-ethnic country uh, with 36 or even more uh, ethnic groups, which comprise 62% of the Bolivian population. The, the, the rest of the population comprises from Spanish and also from Africans who were brought 
in the slavery period to the, 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 the country. And the important fact as well, it's Bolivia has currently the first indigenous uh, president in the world. Any other country in the world elected an uh, indigenous uh, uh, aboriginal member as the president, and the president is Evo Morales. The main language spoken in the country is Spanish, uh, due to the, the Spain colonization, although, although they also speak Guarani, Aymara, and the Quechua as the main language. And there are other uh, 34 indigenous languages considered official as well, not only spoken, but co uh, considered official by the law, by the rule of law. Here you can see Evo Morales and a very beautiful picture with uh, Sholita. In terms of uh, festivals, we have uh, a very rich cultural heritage. The city of Oruro has a carnival which is taken to 20 hours parade with a lot of uh, people going there just to see this uh, festival. It's listed under the UNESCO masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of the humanity. And sometimes Bolivian festivals are also celebrated outside the country because as you, we will see in the next slides, there are a lot of Bolivians living abroad, mainly in South America countries. Here are some pictures of the carnival. There is not only a specificity of Brazil, but also Bolivians. In terms of dances, uh, Bolivia has two main dances considered as uh, intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO. Ishak Penkene Piesta, sorry for my Quechua and Aymara pronouns, and Pujali and Airashi dances. Music, the music in Bolivia is also very rich. Uh, naturally, it's, uh, each ethnic group owns or, uh, its own music, kind of music, and public festivals. Here we see a very common instrument called charango, uh, we, we, where we can, can, from where we can understand that it's very typical by the picture, and also the Andean flute that are specific from the ethnic groups surrounding the Andean mountain. Food, uh, Bolivia also has a lot of different kind of foods. One of the most famous is the bonuelos and tucumanas as well. And here we come with some advices to Bolivia. The first is to use uh, the ecotourism industry to show visitors the beauty found in Bolivia naturally. The second, domestic partnership with local municipalities and local cooperatives. These two first are linked because you cannot work with the, the, the nature without work with people which care traditionally of the nature. As I mentioned before, because of this law, uh, those who are interested and in give some, uh, not give, but to invest in some natural areas need to keep in, in, in close contact with the municipalities and also take, the consider, take into consideration the local cooperatives. The third, it's promote Bolivia as a multicultural country about just few people think about Bolivia as a country, a, a multi-ethnic country. Many people in, mainly in South America think in Bolivia just with uh, uh, the, the Aymara or Quechua heritage, and we don't have access to the rest of ethnic groups' knowledge. And the fourth, it's to boost food festivals and music festivals as well, as Bolivia has a very sh uh, short budget to promote festivals abroad. One good idea would be to use internet to, to broadcast information and bring people to try Bolivian's flavor inside their own country. And the, 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 the fifth, if the ministry agents and the, 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 
the, the cultural ministry, specifically speaking, should work together with the Bolivian communities abroad to promote their national branding. As we have seen these last days, this is a very cheap and useful tool as well when the people from your country who are abroad uh, the country it starts to take part of the national branding campaigns, spreading the message, showing that they are proud of to be Bolivians because I have noticed that unfortunately, very unfortunately, they are more ashamed than proud to say that they come from Bolivia because in South America is still a, a, a hostile uh, continent we, we usually think that we accept everybody, that, we, there, that there is no racism and prejudice, but this is not true. And as we have Bolivians living in Argentina and Brazil, we can check that they suffer a lot of racism and prejudice, and they are very misunderstood. And this, is, uh, this has to do with the 60th point here in the last one that is to raise awareness in cities with large populations of Bolivian citizens and workers. Now we come to exports, imports, and foreign investments. Bolivia has uh, ultimately the most fast-growing GDP in South America, but this is not only because Bolivia is growing, it's because other major countries are decreasing such as Argentina, Brazil, and Chile. So this data doesn't represent necessarily that Bolivia is improving or doing very well. And the main products exported uh, by Bolivia, it's gas and also uh, petroleum. The main partner of Bolivia, it's current Brazil and Argentina are the main partners, Bolivian partners. On the other hand, uh, in the last couple of years, there were some problems about these companies ex exporting petroleum and gas. I don't know if you, if you knew about it, but the president Evo Morales, around five years ago, nationalized it. What is nationalized? A foreign company is working inside your country and your government goes there and say, okay, you are exploiting my resources. I don't want you controlling my resources. Go back to your country that now this company will be held, will be owned by my government. This is nationalization. And he did it with some companies in Bolivia, mainly with a Brazilian petroleum company called Petrobras. But very luckily, our President Lula at that time didn't complain a lot uh, because Bolivia and Brazil are two good partners and the Brazilian government were comprehensive, but the Spanish government was not and also the UK government was not. So at the same time that they depend on international investments and company, they don't give a lot of trust to these companies come to the country. These are some of international investors in Bolivia, mainly from the gas and petroleum sector, Gazprom, Total, Glencore, and BG Group were the ones who kept its investments after this episode. And coca is also a very important product to Bolivia and a very controversial problem, uh, product as well. Bolivia is actually the third largest coca exporter, just behind Peru that suppressed Colombia last year, and Colombia and, and, and Bolivia. And it's very interesting to see that the, the president, Evo Morales, was a, a, a coca uh, plantator in the past. So he defends very heavily the, the, the coca plantations in a way that coca is not necessarily and directly linked with cocaine, the use of drugs, because for those who don't know in South America, coca is a very popular uh, leaf, which it's, was used in the past by Aboriginal people and is still being used by Indianas, uh, Indians populations makes you breathe better and to be more awake. 
And here we're gonna enter uh, deeper in the foreign relations, governance, and migrations. Uh, when Evo Morales took place of the presidential, uh, presidentiality in Bolivia in 2006, uh, he were very lucky, I say lucky, because in South America at that moment, the political arrangement was very easy to be done due to the, 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 the other presidents of the other countries who were also left wing. So he could make a lot of partnerships with Argentina, with Brazil, with Peru, with Bol uh, Colombia as well. But one big problem that is still in place is the access to Bolivia, from Bolivia to the sea. Bolivia is landlocked by Chile and Peru since the war of the Pacific. And uh, it's struggling even inside within the UN scope to convince Chile that the war was unfair and to finally reach the ocean, the Pacific Ocean. And this would be very good to provide Bolivia one more way to export its products, mainly to United States and Europe as well. And the good news is that two years ago, Peru uh, was convinced by the Bolivian government. And if Chile now doesn't allow Bolivia uh, exports pass by its own territory, Peru will do it, but the negotiation is still going on. And here, one more controversial point, it's the relationship between US and Bolivia. Uh, the left wing side of South America has historically a uh, speech against the West, mainly against the United States, right? So because of the historical of exploitation and also the dictatorship time that we had until the 90s, we tend to don't like and to avoid the influence from the, 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 the West. And in 2008, the American ambassador was kicked out from Bolivia. Even though US has a found to help Bolivia avoid the, explot uh, the, the, the export of cocaine, they did it. And this costed a lot of uh, money to Bolivia and br brought a lot of trouble to the country because it showed that Bolivia was not a uh, so reliable country, mainly to US companies. But on, on the other side, this made Bolivia to be more closer to South countries and to the BRICS countries as well, that not, they're not so well aligned with the US and with USA as well. So the relationship with Cuba, with other Latin America countries in the Central America improved a lot because of this shift in the foreign relations. But inside the country, in terms of governance, the situation is still not so good. Um, mainly in matters of education, the illiteracy rate uh, in Bolivia is still very, very high, right? Uh, and around 36 languages, as I said, are spoken in the country. So instead of including people, this is excluding people from the school because one when one guy from the countryside is speaking a native language, goes to the main school, they need to be adapted to Spanish and to a different, completely different kind of education. So how do you promote your country as multicultural if you are not respecting the multiculturality in terms of education? How you, why you are not including multicultural uh, 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 education and teaching inside your own schools? Even though Bolivia has a lot of internal problems uh, regarding corruption and also security in terms of drugs, uh, we, can, we, we, we don't find Bolivia as a very unsafe country in South America compared to Argentina, Brazil, and, and Colombia as well. 
there are around sec, uh, 762 resisted gunks, but only 11 people out of 100,000 people each killed by, uh, per, per, per day in, in Bolivia. For some, this can sound a lot, but compared to South America standards, this is just a few. It's a low murder rate, right? But the problem is in the judiciary system. Around 60% of the country's public persecutors have been formally accused of corruption. So the people, the own people from Bolivia, doesn't rely uh, as it would be if the, 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 in, in the justice, as it would be if the, the, there, there was transparency and there was no corruption in the judiciary system, right? In terms of public health and also, in this case, emigration instead of migration. The public health has a huge problem in terms of facilities. There, there, there is not a, a accurate number of hospitals to the current population living in, in Bolivia. And the number of doctors, it's also very low compared to the population numbers. There are only 130 doctors per 100,000 inhabitants. In contrast with Brazil, for instance, there, which has 1.7 doctors and German 3.5, Spain 3.7, and Cuba 5.91. And immigrants, this is a, a very interesting data to be considered. As I said in one of the first slides, Bolivia has uh, 10 million people, right? 10 million uh, citizens. And from these 10 million, there are 4.5 million outside Bolivia. So it's a very large number uh, living in, in, in Brazil and living also in Argentina. Only in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, there are 300,000 workers that are there working, most of them, I should say, illegally, being not so well paid, and work in manufacturers of clothing under very bad conditions. But if we look to Argentina, happens the same thing. If we look to Colombia, it's happening the same thing. The Bolivars are migra migrating for the, uh, from the country, trying to find better jobs and trying to be better paid. But when they arrive in those countries in the neighborhood area, this is not their reality. So last uh, but not least are some advice about foreign relations, governance, and migrations. First point, it's to avoid double standard speech, uh, mainly regarding the, the, the direction from the, the, the government, which at the same time is complaining against uh, the, the, the West companies and the, the, the West investors, but it's not working so well to make the country less dependent on these companies. So how do you complain, but at the same time you depend? There's no transparency and there's no reality behind this curtain. And capitalize and develop more the multi-ethnic groups. You cannot just let them there to be visited, but you need to work directly with them, giving them and providing them tools to share the incomes, mainly from tourism, and also to have a better cultural promotion and international support for Bolivians abroad. I don't see uh, any move from the Bolivia government along with the Brazilian government, for instance, or the Argentina government, trying to provide a better standard of life to the Bolivian citizens working outside Bolivia. And also, this is a little bit harder, but it's really, really necessary when you want to bring more people, when you want to have a better brand for your country. It's to protect uh, and provide better social uh, service to its people and create more facilities and infrastructure as well. 
and partnership building in trade and environment issues because Bolivia now is, uh, signa has a uh, signatory just for a few international agreements, mainly in the region in South America, but not necessarily outside uh, the, 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 the region. Thank you for your time. I'm able to take your questions. If I'm not uh, able to answer them, I will ask my private advisor, our friend Zaska, that she's Bolivian. I've been there once, so maybe something that I can't uh, answer very well, but let's see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear uh, Pedro, too. I would like to invite you now to continue uh, the discussion, actually during the short coffee break that we are going to have uh, right. uh, now. I uh, would like to thank you one more time for the excellent and so interesting presentation. Please join me in uh, extending our uh, sincere gratitude to Pedro. Thank you very much. So I'm able to private questions.